Uh, so my name is Rob Emanuel. I'm a developer at Xavier, um, which is located uh, it's on uh, 12th and Callahill, right around here. And uh, I'm going to talk about a, um, a library that we developed. It's an open source library uh, called GeoTrellis. Uh, and I want to frame it a little bit in the talks that we've heard previously. Um, so we heard Andrew talk about open source software and the benefits of, uh, uh, of using open source software and uh, open collaboration. And we heard Mark talk about uh, open data and using open source software or any sort of software to expose data sets for, um, for the community to, to consume. Uh, and where GeoTrail sort of fits in with this is that uh, it allows for processing of that data. So we use open data or any data. Uh, and you can consume that data raw. You can expose it through a web service. But a lot of the time, you want to not see a, a raw version of that data, but you want to, you want to actually do some processing with it. Um, so that's what GeoTrellis aims to be, a fast processing engine for, uh, and framework and platform for uh, raster processing. So just to get a feel, um, how many developers are in the crowd? OK, this is sort of going to be sort of a technical talk. I want to go over um, you know, what GeoTrellis is. It's a, it's a library for developing web service software um, for doing raster processing. So uh, I apologize if it gets a little technical for uh, not non-technical people. Um, so what do I mean by real-time raster processing? Uh, first of all, let's talk about what a, a raster is. Uh, who here knows what raster data is? Great. OK, so I could just like, quickly go through it. Um, it's, it's, this, it's this guy. It's uh, a number of cells. Um, there's columns and rows. It's a two-dimensional uh, configuration of values. Um, and it has an extent. It has a, a specific. Uh, boundary over uh, a geographical area, and it describes the, the value of the location um, under it. So you can kind of visualize, visualize it like this. This is uh, a very uh, low resolution raster, but we can see that you know, there would be values. Um, you know, yellow could signify one specific value, and blue could sp signify another specific value about that specific location. Great. So. Now, when I say real-time raster processing, what, what am I talking about? When I say real-time, uh, that's, that's sort of the ideal. I'm really talking about fast, fast raster processing. And fast raster processing in the um, pursuit of uh, good user experience. So if we want to interact with our data in a way that's not just the raw data being sent across the wire, which requires some sort of processing, you need to load up the data, you need to uh, package it in a form that can be sent from a web, web service to the, uh, to the client. But uh, you know, if you want to do even, even more uh, processing steps with that, we want, it, we want it to be fast enough where we get a good user experience. And what that turns out to be is like under 100 milliseconds for doing simple operations. Um, if, you, if you can send a request, have it processed, and get it back in the client, um, in 100 milliseconds, uh, you're, you're going to have a good experience. So that's what I mean by fast. So what does GeoShells provide to uh, give fast raster processing? Um, it provides a, a set of raster data types, um, so ways of interacting through software with raster data. It provides its own uh, file format for storing raster data, storing and loading it, and a number of uh, uh, I.O. operations for uh, loading rasters off the disk uh, quickly. It also provides operations for transforming rasters, which, which is you know, sort of the core of what it's doing. It's, it's allowing you to take raster data and, and processing it to get uh, interesting views of your data. And then also tools for creating web services, um, since it's really geared towards um, providing this, uh, views of this data and processing this data uh, with web services. So um, some examples of use cases of GeoTrellis uh, Business citing, this is a weighted overlay of um, different uh, properties, uh, different uh, yeah, properties that locations can have, and then you weight, um, the, you weight the properties according to what uh, would be good for a business site. And then you can see visually on a map you know, where the hotspots of where we should put our, put our businesses. Uh, hydrology operations, uh, this is a, a tool for students to, um, uh, it's, it's like a game to modify um, the a landscape and see how that affects runoff and uh, different drainage, uh, you know, watershed um, properties. 
Um, a colleague of mine, uh, John Brennigan, uh, on Atlas Blogs, uh, created a fake data set of jackalope uh, uh, sightings. So what you can do with the jackalope sightings is do a kernel density analysis on it and use that to visualize where's the hotspot of, of our jackalopes, where are they, where are they hiding. Um, and here's another kernel density analysis. Uh, this is 911 calls in uh, Seattle. So for a specific time slice, where, uh, you know, or, or, or an interval of time, where were the hotspots of, um, of 911 calls? And you can actually do this in a streaming fashion. Uh, Josh Marcus built an application to do this, uh, kind of stream through the data quickly, and you can sort of visualize where the hotspots are, are occurring and then going, and it's, it was an animated, this is a screenshot from an animation. Um, there, we've also done work with uh, machine learning, um, not exactly building the models or applying the models, but to do feature extraction on uh, data sets. Um, this is output of an application that does uh, crime analysis. It prior, prioritizes um, areas uh, of, a, of a land cover that, are more, uh, that were deemed by a, a machine learning model <coughs> to be high risk. So we can send resources to the high risk areas. Um, and this is an example of uh, a different sort of use of GeoTrellis, which is uh, more batch processing. So this fast real-time analysis is, is a main feature of GeoTrellis, but it's also used for, useful for processing very, very large data sets um, in a, a fast way, but not a, you know, a web speed sub 100 millisecond way. Um, so that's what we use that for. Uh, we also did a project called GeoTrellis Transit um, that does uh, shortest path uh, it uses GTFS data, which was talked about. Also, OpenStreetMap data loads it into a graph structure, does shortest path analysis on it, and, and creates a travel, travel shed. I'd love to go over this uh, further, because um, it's a really cool, really cool algorithm, really cool idea, uh, but I don't have time. So if you want to know more about that, uh, talk to me afterwards. OK, so I'm going to concentrate um, mainly on operations for transforming rasters. Uh, that's, that's the, the piece that I'm going to concentrate on with GeoTrellis. Um, so what does it mean to, op to, to work with raster data? Um, there's this, uh, this concept, map algebra, that was, uh, came out of a, a PhD thesis by uh, Dana Tomlin, uh, written in the 1980s. And it's a powerful way of combining different pieces of, of geographic information through uh, raster data. And it classifies operations into three categories. There's local operations, and this is, I'll just go through this really quick. This is a dense topic, so if you have questions, uh, see me afterwards. Um, so local operations are operations on, on raster sets that only concentrate on one specific cell at a time. Uh, so it doesn't need any neighboring information or information about the whole raster set to uh, perform data. There's focal operations, which um, need neighboring, just the neighboring cells. So if you're computing one cell, the neighboring eight cells. Uh, there's zonal operations, which uh, operate on cells in a specific zone. And there's global operations, which I don't think is uh, officially a part of map algebra, just because you can consider global operations as uh, operations with one zone, that being the whole raster. So I'm going to concentrate on the local operations right now. So we have a raster, and we want to do something interesting with it. Uh, one thing we can do is add raster. So what does, that, what does that mean? What does it mean to take these two data types and add them? Uh, well, what Map Algebra says is when you add them, you get another raster. And uh, you can kind of see how a yellow plus a blue equals a green uh, throughout the whole raster. So the concept here is that it's a local operation per, per cell. We just take each, we just take each uh, number per cell and add them. Uh, same thing with multiplication, you know, with a, with a different cell, we have, uh, you know, a, a, a multiplication operation that we, we can perform on these rasters. And then we could also define um, an operation for a raster and a number, and we can kind of conceptually look at this as, as if the raster was just all the same number. Uh, per, for performance reasons, we don't actually uh, implement it like this. Um, okay, so how, how can we use this? to do interesting things. Um, even with just the ones that I went over, the local uh, add and the local multiply, uh, we can perform what's called a, a weighted overlay. 
And what this is, is uh, this is a map of, uh, of uh, Asheville. And um, it's a set of, uh, this application has a set of raster layers that uh, specify things like proximity to rivers, uh, proximity to interstate ramps, uh, residential zoning, and state development uh, incentive areas. And you can weight each one of those, um, each one of those qualities of the land by how much you're you know, interested in it, how, how much it means as a positive factor for what you're trying to do. And once you multiply all those out and add them, you get this weighted overlay of, um, of uh, you know, interesting areas. So like the red areas are more prominent to, to your factors. So, and this can also be, um, this can also be uh, used uh, in conjunction with other uh, raster operations, such as zonal, sh zonal summary. Um, so I want to show you an application that was developed um, for the University of Chattanooga. Come on, uh, you're going to get there. That does exactly this uh, zonal operation. Right, so, and this is, it's a kind of a slow connection, so I promise it's, it's actually faster than, than what you're about to see. But, um, yeah, it, uh, so this is a weighted overlay based on a number of factors. Um, and you can, you can update, oops, you can change the, um, the weights of the different factors. And in real time, again, kind of a slow connection, uh, get results, really. All right, anyway. Um, on, on your desktop machine, I promise you that you'll get almost instantaneous results of this painted raster. Uh, uh, yeah, and then another, another feature of this is that you would be able to um, take, create a polygon. Come on. All right, the demo gods are, are not smiling on me right now. So let me just skip that. Anyway. So you could create a polygon and uh, crop the specific weighted overlay area to um, the area that you're interested in, and then uh, have uh, different scores for the different properties, and then give uh, the zone a final score. Um, and this way, people that are doing uh, you know, city planning can carve out the areas that they're interested in and see how qualified they are for, for what, they're, what they're looking for. So um, I just want to point out that this weighted overlay uh, on 10,000 by 1,000 rasters, which are not big rasters, um, that's 10 million multiplications. That's nine additions between the different raster layers. Uh, it's 19 million operations, which is a lot for just doing the simple very simple analysis, this processing of data. Um, so to give you an idea, this is just a really quick um, Python, you know, hack together Python script that go, just, you know, adds one number over and over again for 19 million times, and it took three second, over three seconds to, um, to run. And this is, like, unfair because th this code could be optimized, but it's just pointing out that to do anything, even the most simple thing, 19 million times, that is very slow. Uh, so we can't really get the web experience that we're looking for. So GeoTrellis is a lot of things to make it fast and to make it uh, web speed. And it does a lot of things, but one thing I'm going to talk about is uh, tiling and distributed processing and how it distributes over tiles, raster tiles, to speed things up. So what do I mean by tiling? So we have this, this raster equation. Uh, we can actually chunk up these uh, rasters into specific tiles. And now we can distribute work, because a local ad doesn't need any inform information about anything around it. Uh, so this is um, a really parallelizable problem. Um, so we can say that there's going to be one process per tile. And now we can run these four processes at the same time. So GeoTrails is, is smart about doing work over tiles. And where we see this equation as this, the um, the GeoTrails is, sees it as this. It's adding each of the tiles individually. It's got four equations, and it solves them in parallel. So we've sped it up 
by four. Um, so really quickly, um, I want to go over um, some code just to give you an idea of what uh, GeoCharles uh, code looks like. Um, who here knows uh, what the language Scala is? OK, cool, cool. Um, it's a JVM-based language, and, and GeoTrails is, is uh, programmed in it. Um, so it's, it's a great language, uh, and there's a lot of reasons that we chose it. Um, but I apologize if the syntax looks a little weird. Um, hopefully, this is a very simple example, so hopefully uh, you can follow along. Um, this just defines like the layer uh, names to the weights of uh, the different layers. And right here we have um, this, this simple map to load up the raster sources. So based on the name, we load up a raster source and we do a, uh, this local multiply. So this is doing the, the first step of the weighted overlay. It's multiplying a raster layer by the weight. And Scala has some uh, really nice syntactical features that will actually simplify this code to just like this nice one-liner. And even if you don't program, you can kind of see how, OK, this is taking you know, uh, impervious services, barren land, open water with a weight of one and performing this, this multiplication. Um, and at this point, so GeoTrellis uh, has has a process in which you define operations, you, you, you describe the, the process chain that you want to run, but nothing actually happens until you tell the server to run that operation. So this is just describing work for now. So we've, we've described the, uh, the multiplication of the rasters, um, and now this is defining the adding of all the rasters. Uh, if you're interested in functional programming, um, you've probably run up against the reduce function. It just takes a sequence and kind of collapses it into each other based on what you, uh, the, the function that you pass. So this is that local add between two rasters. Again, Scala is uh, really nice about giving you syntax sugar. So it kind of it can turn into that. Very succinct way to describe a weighted overlay. You're saying load up the raster, times it by the weight, and then reduce it with addition. Uh, and then uh, we have functionality to render rasters. So rasters are just this um, you know, set of values, this matrix of values. Uh, if we want to paint it on a map, we're going to have to turn that into a, a PNG. Um, so Mike Tedeschi, another colleague of mine, um, contributed a number of color ramps that GeoTrellis uses to paint rasters. Um, and you can choose uh, a number of predefined color ramps, or you can uh, create your own. Um, so that's, that's the code to do that. Now we're done describing the operation completely. And we send it back to the client uh, by telling GeoTrellis to run this source and then, uh, and then returning it as a PNG image. Um, some other things we, so real quickly, uh, some other things we'd want to do uh, is use a polygon that we parsed from GeoJSON. Um, to do a zonal summary, just to modify that weighted overlay to now do a zonal summary, it's, it's this many more lines of code. Um, and then so for tiled rasters, um, what do we have to change about this code? We don't. If you, if you have a tiled raster and you have it, say, distributed over a cluster, um, GeoTrellis will know how to uh, distribute that work just because you give it the name. The raster layers are keyed off of name. Um, so if the raster is set up to be distributed, to be tiled, it will just process it as such. Um, and you have to call distribute on it to send it over a cluster. But I think I'm out of time, so uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, if you're interested in this sort of uh, processing, uh, you know, data processing, uh, GeoTrellis is one of many projects at Azavia, and we're hiring, so talk to any one of us. And um, thanks a lot. If you're interested in uh, GeoTrellis, we have an IRC channel, a uh, user group. Uh, just come and talk to me. I'm a friendly guy, so let's let's talk about map stuff. All right, thanks.